Hey everybody, Michael Broning here. Uh, I'm making this video to explain stems. Uh, I get asked this a lot. What's a stem? Uh, why do we need stems? Send the stems. Um, a lot of people know what they are, uh, but in case you don't, um, a stem is basically what we do uh, when we're working with musicians remotely. Um, when you have someone that can't record at your studio, a bass player, drummer, etc., and you're sending them reference tracks, um, a stem is basically a submix of different parts of the song, uh, mainly so they have the ability to mute out the part that they're going to be tracking. Um, so in this particular case, uh, this is an easy one. I'm about to send out uh, some parts to my bass player, Mel Brown. Amazing guy, amazing bass player. I'm so fortunate to work with him. Uh, and Mel has pretty simple requirements. He just needs a, uh, as far as the stems go, just a submix of the song with the bass muted out and then a separate stem, which is a bass reference track that I recorded uh, and played on a keyboard just to give him an idea. But it's separate. It's a separate stem that he has the ability to mute so he can track the song and then send it back to me. Uh, you can do this with uh, all kinds of different instruments, with drums, you mute the drums, and that as a separate stem, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but this is, like I say, a pretty easy one. This is just two stems. But I'm gonna show you how I do it, and uh, hopefully this is helpful for some of you. So first off, um, I'm working on this song, and anytime I'm working on a uh, a song getting ideas down, I use a, a bass program uh, and just program it with a synth. In this particular case, I'm using uh, the Trillion by uh, Spectrosonics, which is a great bass module. Um, but for this particular song, I'm just using it as a, as a dummy track to get an idea. This gives my bass player an idea of, you know, what to play. Uh, the, you know any modulations, chord changes, and that he can he can work off of that. Um, but uh, no bass player wants the bass to be in there when they're tracking. Um, so I'm going to send him two different tracks. One's going to be just the bass, my dummy bass track um, off the spectro uh, Spectrosonics, and the other's going to be a stereo track of the entire mix with the bass muted out. Um, and that's how I'm going to send them. So I'm going to send them two different um, WAV files. So it's easy to do. Um, I'm just going to mute this. Um, and you can either export it. I'm going to actually dump this down to a separate track, which I've already done. Um, and by doing that, I just select all and then go to the track section here bounce to track and make sure everything's uh, selected bounce it down as a track which i have here so this is my track with the bass taken out there's no bass there so i'm going to send him that and he, that's what he's going to track to is this track with the bass taken out uh, but now I'm going to also give him my Trillion bass line. So I'm going to solo that out, and I'm going to do the same thing. Um, and I'm going to show you why I bounce it to a track here in a second. So um, I'm going to bounce this down to a track. This is doing it as stereo. I'll probably make it mono, just because bass is always in mono. Um, but to save time, I'm just dumping it down as a stereo track. So we'll wait for that to dump down. So now I have two tracks, which we can export separately. So this is now, now just the bass. So when Mel is tracking this, he's going to figure out what to play having both of these in. And then he'll mute it when he's tracking. Um, but the reason I like to dump it down to tracks within Cakewalk is one thing I'm pretty anal about is I, I want to make sure that every track that I give the musicians um, 
has something at the top because if there's any discrepancy, um, they want to be able, it's easy to match if you have the same thing at the top. So at the top here, I have a drum groove. I'm just going to copy it down. So now he's got the count in. And typically I'll just cut off like the last measure or the last beat. Now he has a reference track to play to that has a click at the top. So if there's any, if anything gets moved, he, he always has that to, um, to match it to the other track is because this can happen sometimes. Sometimes somebody will move it and you'll get this. So just having that at the top lets, lets you match. So you don't have any issues with that. Then I will then dump this down, bounce to clip. Now it's all one track and you can export it. I typically, I have SoundForge that I like to dump these down to. Typically what I'll do here is make it mono and then export that, save that down and send it out. So um, that is how I do it. Um, drums are a whole other uh, way of doing it. With drums, you want to mute the entire drum track. And then I like to have a, a, a groove um, that I can give the drummer so he can kind of have an idea of what, what the song is looking for and then do his own take on it. And this is that's the nice thing about this. I'm not a bass player, so whatever I play here, Sometimes Mel uses it, um, sometimes, um, and every time he does, he plays it obviously a lot better than me because I'm doing it as a keyboard player, but um, it just gives him an idea of what the song's looking for, but typically he puts his own take on it. If I send it to other bass players, they're going to do the same thing. Whatever project you're on, um, it's the same thing. It just You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to lay down the most amazing bass line. You just want to be able to you know, lay something down so they can hear what the song sounds like with that bottom end and then then let the bass player do what they do. But if you leave it in the track, they can't record over it because that bass is going to get in the way. You're going to have two basses playing at the same time and it makes it impossible for them. So that's why whatever you're sending out, whether it's bass or guitars or you're sending it to a keyboard player, you always want to mute out the part of the song that they're going to be retracking and and bounce it down as a separate track so they can hear what you did so they can get an idea but then they can turn it off when they do their tracking so in this particular case it's bass uh, but that's how i do it um and i might do another one here uh when i'm sending out for live drums that's a whole other uh, beast in itself but hopefully that helps you guys and if you have any questions uh, leave them in the comments section thanks take care bye